how to create your own accessibility mappings from mapping a PI channel to a CPI channel object when you're migrating with the VGAF tool. So when you want to create your own mappings, um, so one of the th places where it makes sense if, if you have a lot of custom things into your mappings or into your channels that you'll be using often. If you have something that is not used that much, but it's just a few parameters that change, it's probably easier just to uh, migrate the channels with the default one and then correct the settings. But if you want to set it up in global settings, it's a good idea to create specific channels for your settings. If no standard version exists from VGAF, it's also a good idea. Um, and if you have some special handling of ha er, of adapters, it could be that the if file server would be mapped to a SFTP or uh, FTPS uh, channel or something else, that would also count for some of these uh, settings. Um, and then obviously if you have custom adapters. So the process is that once it does the migration, it will take a PI channel XML use the XSLTs that is provided and then you would uh, create a block in the CPI flow. And here we have a look at the XSLT and what we can then see is it contains three blocks this XSLT it is mapping on the channel XML. Here we have a block uh, that this is actually taken from the, the payload of the CPI system. Um, and then we can define external properties. These are all the external properties that we would be using when defining these things. And then at the end, we could have some notifications um, to to give users information about what they need to, to deliver. The process is that you will take a channel XML and the easiest way is just to fetch it from the, the PI or from VGAF tool, save it in your repository. Then you want to create the correct mapping in the CPI iFlow, synchronize that to the Git repository, get the iFlow out of your Git repository and then find the relevant code block, copy the existing mapping, and remember formatting, uh, directory names, etc. Um, then you want to update the block or insert the new block that you found, update it, with XPath to the extracted element, update it to your repository, obviously run and test it. And if you're successful and you think that it's something that other people could use, then obviously share it with us, either uh, submit to, to the Git repository or send us an email with it. So let's try it out. First off, we have here our channel. It has an SFTP uh, receiver channel here. And we can do this, we can open it. We have an option here to click download the payload. And what we can then do is we can take this and move it into the template git repository in here. I've just created a new folder with tests, uh, FTP, we say refactor. And we don't want to just in this case add it to our Git repository. Um, we will just reformat it so we can see what's going on. Then we will go to our Git repository. We will uh, con configure communication channel with this. And what we can then go is we can let's see here where I have it. So here I have uh, my Git repository and I have my migration demos in here. And if we select any of these, mm, we can see here we have the resources, we have the scenario integration flow and here we have the template XML. And in here we can then find all the relevant items for it. Um, so here we have, this is uh, the 
HTTP channel that we have defined here. And here we can see all the different properties that is defined in the FTP or uh, HTTP channel. I think that's pretty boring. Um, that's HTTP. And I think the next one here is HTTP2. And here we have the FTP. So what we can then do is here we have the properties that is defined. We can see it has these different attributes. And what we will then do is we will go to our scenario here. This is a file receiver. So we will co copy this one. Put it into the same directory. Paste. Or whatever we make sense of this, add it to a repository. We can then delete all of this block. So we will delete that. Or whatever, however much makes sense to delete. We will go to the CPI repository and here we just take all these properties. And the thing is that these properties would probably be changed as we get along. Um, or as SAP update them with different versions, then you will probably also in those cases need to update the iFlow properties that you have here. So here we have it. We can see some of the different settings that has been defined um, here as default in the setting. So we have a template file name that's uh, attribute that's being set. So here we have the FTP host as a external properties and we can then copy these values into here find out the relevant data that needs to be inserted into it um, and then we can actually do the same thing for the username so here we just want to check if this user exists so we can just give an advice or a notification us so once we want to try this out we will obviously go here we will save this we can then use the editors tool you have for running the XSLT. And I have almost a copy here that works, uh, but you can also in here, just create a new one. It is, you need to select the file, XSLT file that you're using. So it's version two. What are the template file we created? Just mapping and then where do you want to show it uh, as a highlight and then we can run it and hopefully we'll then see the XSLT output we can see all the data that we get in from this and we can see if it looks correctly once it's that we will save it move it to the server and run the migration again I hope this makes sense and you can see how easy it is to create your own XSLT or modify the existing templates. Thank you.